up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i'm gold coney i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 hyundai santa fe courtesy of jack g and volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so i am in this one today because i do own a santa fe i absolutely love it it's a 2017 it has around 48,000 miles and has not had a single thing wrong with it so far not only that of course with it being a hyundai you do get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance which is going to save you some money there and America's best warranty being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. And so ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Santa Fe. First one being the SE starting at $29,490. $95. In case you were curious, yes, that is a slight price bump from the 2022 model year, approximately $850 more expensive than the previous model year. SEL trim starting at $33,195. XRT for $34,995. Limited for $41,345. And lastly, the calligraphy, which is the one we are in today, starting at $43,345. But as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are actually two different power plants that you have to choose from for the 2023 santa fe first one belonging to the se sel and xrt that one is powered by a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 191 horsepower at 6100 rpm 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power center front wheels are all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.9 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 28 highway for the front wheel drive 22 in the city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is the other power plant belonging to the limited and the calligraphy and therefore the one we have today that one is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder 281 horsepower 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed wet dual clutch with paddle shifters you guys know we will test out those paddle shifters here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.2 seconds it's very impressive for an suv with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 28 in the highway for the front wheel drive 21 in the city 28 also on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel yet again that's pretty impressive but before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the Santa Fe, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a circular dial located just to the right of the shift buttons. Yes, there's not a traditional shifter in the Santa Fe. They are simply buttons. There's D for drive, P for park, and for neutral or for reverse. So just press the button. That's how you're going to go. But circular dial is going to adjust the drive modes. Those drive modes will include comfort, sport, smart, and snow, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the all-wheel drive system engagement as well so did want to also mention though there's a lock button in the middle of that circular dial that is going to be your all-wheel drive lock it comes with an h-track all-wheel drive system meaning you have the ability to set it in full-time all-wheel drive let's say if it's snowing out here in pennsylvania that's what i personally do on my own santa fe it gives you that extra peace of mind and of course it's going to perform better in the snow and also other off-road situations of course as well but now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's put it in the fun sport driving mode here let's put the paddle shifters to the test and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right and first year go baby quick quick all right they're pretty quick not the very quickest i've ever tested because that belongs to Mer maserati and mercedes-benz things like that but still insanely quick paddle shifters and that's due in part because we have a wet dual clutch typically if you get a wet dual clutch or any kind of dual clutch for that matter you're going to have very quick response times for the paddle shifters and that's certainly the case in the santa fe as opposed to the eight speed automatic maybe in the non-turbocharged engine you're not going to get as quick of paddle shifter reaction times because i have that particular transmission in my sonata and it doesn't have that quick of paddle shifter reaction times but still i love that they're quick in the wet dual clutch so i got to give it credit for that so that's super cool but anyways now I've got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's find another straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe here up to speed. All right, this thing wants to go. A little bit of a rolling start, guys, but off it goes. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, 
<laughs> That'll definitely get, get the job done, man. Not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. That initial get up and go definitely throws your headrest in, definitely throws your headrest, definitely throws your head into the back of the headrest. And quite honestly, there wasn't any turbo lag either. You do get that sometimes with turbocharged four cylinders specifically, but there was none of that here in the Hyundai Santa Fe. So big fan of that. But anyways, now having got that out of the way, Braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 12 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it actually comes in at a very impressive 117 feet. And I say very impressive because I know my Santa Fe back in 2017, and I have the XL by the way, so it's a three row, but still my Santa Fe has a very soft braking feel and I think the braking distance is like 132. So Hyundai has substantially improved the 60 to zero distance on the Santa Fe, which is definitely Definitely a good thing. I just came up to a red light there. It's still relatively soft braking feel, which is kind of what you would expect for an SUV, but it's certainly not as bad as my personal Santa Fe. So I don't mind the braking and still that 117 foot number that basically gives you peace of mind right there. So that's definitely gonna bring this thing to a stop very, very quickly. So big fan of that. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, of course. As far as ride quality goes, that is one thing where Hyundai always kills it. They always get that right. Ride quality is 100% on point, even without anything fancy like an adaptive damping suspension or anything like that. This thing rides incredibly smooth smooth so certainly you are not going to mind any long road trips here to Ocean City Maryland or whatever that's where I just came back from last week so definitely a very smooth ride I'll just go put it that way as far as steering feel goes it does adjust pretty substantially dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in you also do have the ability to kind of tailor those characteristics to your own personal liking if you wanted to so you can make a heavier steering feel if you want but I prefer the heavier steering feel and uh, without it in that sport driving mode, you do kind of have a looser steering feel. But having said that, again, it's still it's still a heavier steering feel than my 2017 Santa Fe, which I'm a huge fan of. So definitely a very nice feel. It's weighted heavier than I would have expected. So big fan of that. Then touching on cabin noise as we are going eight miles per hour over this little speed bump right here. It is perfectly fine. You do get an acoustic laminated front windshield that comes standard. However, acoustic laminated front side glass is actually going to come on the XRT trim level and up. So that's gonna provide even better kind of dampening for exterior wind noises coming into the cabin. And quite honestly, I've noticed a lot of wind noise in the past, but I didn't notice anything on this one today. Maybe it's because we have the calligraphy and we have that acoustic laminated front door glass, but 100% on point for the cabin noise. It's very serene cabin, which I don't typically say with Hyundai because usually they are known for a little bit of cabin noise, but it's not the case here in the calligraphy Santa Fe. So huge fan of that. Then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So you're definitely not gonna have any issues there. Not only that, when it comes to forward visibility, you do get rain sensing windshield wipers that come with the limited and calligraphy trim levels. You also get a head up display coming with the calligraphy trim level. So right now I have the speed limit projected up on my windshield as well as my current speed and also safety features as well. It did what also mention when you turn on the turn signal you are actually going to get a blind spot view monitor that is available for the higher trim levels as well so it's going to give you a camera view of what is beside you which is a pretty cool feature in itself as well but anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe finished in Calypso Red is the exact exterior color name in case anybody was curious. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. There is a large dark chrome grill for the calligraphy trim level specifically, along with a unique front bumper and skid plates. All of that specific to the calligraphy trim level that we have with us here today. Large chrome front grill, though, coming with all of the other trims in case you were curious to the sides front air curtains do come standard there are also silver accents on the lower portion of that front bumper that comes standard as well to the sides though led headlights come standard on every single trim level across the board gotta love that along with led accent lights led daytime running lights and the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there but it gets better high beam assist also comes standard for all trim levels across the board meaning when you have your high beams on at night and the senses of vehicle coming in the opposite direction 
direction. It's going to automatically dim your high beams back to low beams. And then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to bump it automatically back up to high beams. So it is a very convenient safety feature in itself. So a big fan of that. As far as where the lighting is located, the LED daytime running lights and turn signals are going to be on top. Then just below that, you're actually going to find your headlights. And so the low beam headlights are going to be on the exterior. And then the high beam headlights are going to be on the interior of that lighting setup there in case anybody was curious. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Santa Fe. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. And so starting up top, roof rails are going to come standard on the SEL trim level and up. There is a roof rack that comes standard on the XRT along with side steps down below as well, specific for the XRT trim levels. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard body color door handles for the SE and SEL trims. You're gonna get satin chrome accents on those door handles though for the limited and then dark chrome accents on the door handles for the calligraphy. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals for the SEL trim level and up. Power folding then for the limited and calligraphy and then gloss black for the XRT trim level. Then take a look at the side skirts. They will be body colored for the calligraphy trim level only otherwise swap out those body colored side skirts for a matte black finish for all other trim levels take a look then at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys for the se sel and xrt trims 19 inch alloys for the limited and 20 inch alloys then for the calligraphy but that pretty much rounds out the side profile here so now go ahead and make our way to the back of the santa fe and so starting up top, there is a body colored shark fin antenna, of course, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, LED tail light specific to the limited and calligraphy trim levels. Of course, also Santa Fe badging found on that rear tailgate there in typical Santa Fe fashion. I've always liked that specific logo for the Santa Fe. It's got the little sun on the side as well. It's pretty cool. H-Track badging, if all wheel drive equipped, every single manufacturer out there tends to name their all wheel drive system these days for Hyundai. It is called H-Track and that goes for Genesis as well in case you were curious. Silver accenting can be found on the lower portion of that rear bumper as well and then to the side a single exhaust outlet with a chrome tip. So having said that I think you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free smart tailgate for the limited and calligraphy trim levels. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 36.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 72.1 cubic feet then. Do want to also mention, since we are back here, there is in-floor storage with two sections to it. This is one of my favorite parts. So the section towards the actual part where you put things in, there's a little bit of storage, but then, the, then there's also that tire inflator kit. But then further up in the cargo area, there is a massive in-floor storage section with, it's kind of compartmentalized into three different sections as well. I absolutely Absolutely love that. That is a huge deal for me, particularly. Power folding second row is going to come with the limited and calligraphy trim levels. There's cargo lighting back there, grocery bag hooks, tie down anchors. There is a cargo cover and then a 12 volt power outlet as well. And so then making your way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 41.7 inches. That is insanely impressive for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders as well. Reclining rear seats. That was pretty cool. Heated rear seats will actually come standard on the limited and calligraphy trim levels. Dual rear USB charging ports also coming standard. There is also a 115 volt power outlet available. That was surprising surprising to see and rear window sunshades do come standard on the limited and calligraphy trim levels only then so then making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating for the se eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the sel trim level and up heated front seats for the sel trim level and up yet again leather seating for the limited and calligraphy and this is really where the seating gets good so for those two particular trim levels you also get four-way power lumbar adjustment driver seat leg cushion extension eight-way power adjustable passenger seat, ventilated front seats, memory settings, 
all of those coming with just the limited and calligraphy. And so since we have one of those trim level seating was incredibly comfortable, I will say that with all of the adjustments available, definitely not gonna have any issues taking the Santa Fe on a long road trip as I just got done doing actually to Ocean City, Maryland in my 2017 Santa Fe. But so then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the limited and calligraphy and then heated for the limited and calligraphy as well. So definitely a fan of that. Take a look at the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You have quite a bit of buttons on this key. I will say that lock unlock. Of course, there is the button to uh, pop the rear tailgate there. There is remote start as well. But my very favorite part is the smart park. And so let me show you guys that you can actually as long as the vehicle is locked, you can use the remote start to start this one up. And then if you hold down that smart park button, the vehicle will either pull in or pull out of a spot for you. So if somebody parks too close to you, you can simply pull your vehicle out without having to actually get in and then let it go when you want it to stop or it's automatically going to stop if it senses an object or a person in the way, of course, as well. So I love that feature. It's different and I am a huge fan, but keyless entry with the push button start is going to come on the SEL trim level and up. So for this case, all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. And so once started up, analog gauges do come standard. However, with the limited and calligraphy yet again, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard. So with that digital gauge cluster, you can completely change the look with the driving modes. For example, if you put it in the sport driving mode, you're going to get kind of a carbon fiber or checkered kind of pattern with some red hues otherwise it is going to be the standard setup and that's pretty much the differentiation when it comes to changing the look of the gauges and of course there are also steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel which allows you to display different things like outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty when you need your next oil change the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the gauges up there but then making our way to overall interior quality there is a panoramic sunroof for the limited and calligraphy trim levels only cloth headliner coming with the se and sel trim levels melange headliner for the limited suede headliner for the calligraphy. A lot of different headliners there, and I absolutely love the suede headliner that we have in our calligraphy here today. LED interior lighting with the limited calligraphy, interior accent lighting for the calligraphy as well. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls for the limited trim level and calligraphy yet again. Dual zone climate control, same trim levels, but wireless phone charger coming with the SEL trim level and up. And overall, an excellent attention to detail done by Hyundai with the Santa Fe. So you got the carbon fiber-ish look. I love that. There's silver finishes to different knobs and buttons with kind of a texturized finish as well. Definitely didn't overlook anything. So not to mention the 64 colors of ambient lighting. I also for, almost forgot to mention that as well. So plenty of a very nice interior quality here in the Santa Fe. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display for the SE and SEL. 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display for the limited trim level and up. But I will say either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay coming standard as well. Actually, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay specifically for the SE and SEL trim levels, oddly enough. So the bottom trim levels get the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So that is interesting. But nonetheless, factory navigation system coming with the 10 and a quarter inch screen. There is a quiet mode which shuts off the speakers in the back and limits the speakers in the front, perhaps if your kids are sleeping in the back. So that's pretty cool. Voice intercom system. The Palisade has that as well. I always like playing around with that. It projects your voice into the back. Voice memo system if you wanted to record your voice and then play it back at a later date so you didn't forget anything. Climate control settings can be found up there and of course your radio information as well. So when it comes to the sound system, six speakers is going to come with the SE, SEL, and XRT trims. Then there is a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system for the limited and calligraphy trim. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, tons of bass, definitely a bit going on when it comes to the bass. Clarity was perfectly fine. Honestly, Harmony Cardin always does a good job. So that sound system for the Santa Fe is perfectly fine. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Santa Fe in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, you will also get a surround view monitor giving you that bird's eye view as well, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start with the very best part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. 
Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot collision avoidance assist system, rear cross traffic alert, rear occupant alert, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keep assist, driver attention warning system, safe exit assist, and lane following assist as well. That's a heck of a lot of standard safety features there. Then if you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, that is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors and highway driving assist as well, which essentially is Hyundai's level two autonomous driving system. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, the tech on this thing is absolutely great. Huge fan of that. IHS top safety pick plus, that's also pretty huge. That's the very best safety rating you could possibly get by IHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Very powerful turbocharged engine, plenty of pickup in this thing. America's best warranty as well. You get 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. So it's definitely peace of mind there. You get three years of free maintenance. So you've got to pay for the oil changes and tire rotation things like that for the first three years as far as room for improvement goes really the only thing i can think of is wireless android auto apple carplay for the upper trim levels but other than that this thing is pretty much on point and so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold. Just